had um <laughs> okay that's a picture of a blue tang fish and let me just real quick show you um what that's going to look like when we're done our painting um there. it's not letting me get in there oh i clicked the wrong thing sorry <laughs> um anyway i have a picture of what the end result is going to look like and that would be this which oops it's too big again but it's very similar to what we did there. That's my, my new face. <laughs> um, it's very similar to what we did as far as the technique uh, with the, uh, the puffy letters that we did, where we're going to paint with watercolor. And then we're going to go in over top of that and draw a bunch of stuff um, with markers and pens and pencils, colored pencils, anything like that that you want to use and really embellish um, our or what we did with the watercolor. And so let me switch that back to, well, actually, um, would y'all rather look at at this for your, for the reference photo, or would you rather I had the, um, the other fish that's just the regular fish picture up there? I don't know about anybody else, but I kind of like your painting. Okay. So why don't everybody um, raise your hand so yeah, we can raise, see? Yeah, you raise agree? your hand if you want the painting. Can you see that, Christine? I see most everybody is raising their hand. Is there anybody that would rather have the reference photo? I don't know how to raise my hand here. <laughs> Just Sarah, raise your Sarah, hand yes, and wave at it. To. What? Just wave. Just, oh. just raise your hand. I, I, don't, I don't have a video on my... Uh, desktop so i can't but yes i like the painting <laughs> okay if you're on a desktop you will have video you have to click start video i, I know i have it hasn't been able to do it i haven't been able to uh oh, to your camera is done. Done. something looks is to me yeah. like it looks to me like everybody wants your painting Christine. okay then we'll leave it my painting um and that means let's go here and i got one more thing i have to click Okay, and whoops, get that there. Okay, now I think we're, I think I'm looking at the right thing here. Yes, I have my Zoom screen up so I can see what uh, you guys are seeing so that I show you the right thing. And uh, let's see, why is that big like that? It's taken up my whole page. That's not going to work. Sorry, one more quick little thing okay uh let's get this out of the way here actually is the painting swimming right over to that guy but anyway um that shows you the one that's the the reference where is it that one <laughs> that one right there is um, really accurate colors. So that kind of shows you what difference there might be between what, what I'm seeing and what you're seeing here. And let me see if I turn a light on. Does that, that it maybe improves things a little bit. Let me just look at it without and with. Okay. I, may I, I quick, while you're on. doing that, say um, anybody who has questions, if you will type them into the chat, Either Julie or I will gather them up, and at one time we'll give them all to Christine. Then that way we're not jumping in and out on Christine. Okay. I just want to ask a question. Are we going to put our paper on with masking tape like we've done in the previous lessons? Um, you will always need to either be painting in a block where, where your pages are all glued together mm -hmm. like these, or you will need to tape it down. Okay. Thank you because when we put a lot of water on here your the paper sucks up the water and it'll start warping and bending and buckling and we want it to lay as flat as possible that is the point of taping it down so you can always go ahead and do that in advance have your paper taped down 
And Evie, before we get rolling, if you want to ask your question, and then after that, everybody type them in the chat. Okay, what kind of a fish is it? So I can Google the, um, you know, the actual fish. Um, it's a blue tang fish. Okay. And if you go on, I think uh, this right here, that's not the right one. Or it is, and it's covered up. Uh, I had put the link in there, but you can go on Unsplash dot com and find that exact reference picture that I was showing you uh, before I had my painting up there uh, unsplash dot com and then just go in the categories of pictures and look for fish or type fish in the search and scroll through and you'll find uh, the exact reference that I used for this um, painting and really it's just got the basic shape and shows you where some of the colors and things are it's kind of nice actually to look at that and it wouldn't take me long to just put an extra one up here i think i'll just do that because the point is uh, i want you to see how to um how to look at at your subject and see all these extra things and all these extra shapes and curly cues and see where you might add some of that stuff so give me a second here and I'm going to add another reference pic. So we'll have both of them up there. If I can remember how to do that image right there. Okay. While you're doing that, we want Roberta's Bella to step more into the camera. We want what? Roberta, who is that behind you? We want to see him while Christine works. Christine, we're just waiting for you to do your, your thing. Oh. <laughs> okay. Hello. That's my son. <laughs> Hello. Hi, everybody. Enjoying your art class? Yes. Good. Give my mother good instruction. I want to see her improve. Will do. Enjoy. Thank you. All right, there. I've got both references up there and you can see from this um, this allows you to see how i looked at at this one at the real fish and i turned it into this one by adding all these extra lines and curly cues i've got um let me turn it so you can see it good in the light here uh, I've got all these lines and decorative things on here. And these are, I put watercolor on that looks like this. So this would be the part like step one that we did uh, of those watercolor puffy letters. This is all the watercolor part. And then we go back in and we start adding and embellishing with pens and markers and um, maybe more watercolor, uh, colored pencils, whatever you can think of. To, to change up how it looks. Really wishing those dark marker lines would show better because I've got a whole lot of detail all in there. I think that might be in, yeah, see all that detail in there? I put all that in there with the, the markers. And for this one, uh, it's a lot of dark color, but you can see how um, that section on the actual fish there. Okay. The, on the actual fish, the dark section there, um, I, I embellished that part here with a lot of it's, it's dark blue paint with a lot of marker on top of it. And then this is a bunch of green and yellow mishmash of colors that I hit with the spray bottle. And then I took my markers and drew some lines in there. Cause this is a, a sea fan or it's a type of coral. It's called a sea fan. This one is another type of coral, and I forget the name of it. This is a, a branching, uh, branching tube sponge, <laughs> something like that. But if you look up corals, that can give you some ideas of what to put in there. I also have pattern books that I look through, and I have uh, this cool thing, which is a thing I got um, at a coffee shop down in the Keys but it just has all these sample ideas and you can get these things online or you can Google uh, corals and all of these kinds of things are things you can put in the background of your picture once you've got the
the watercolor part done. So now let's get right to the watercolor painting part. And what I want you to do is take your, your paper that's ready to go, shift everything over here, and uh, so take your paper that's ready to go and we're gonna we're not gonna draw anything we're gonna use our paint brushes and go straight on here uh, and and we're gonna draw that fish shape and I'm gonna show you how to do that by just taking clean water on your paintbrush although I think I will use oops I forgot to get my paper towels you should definitely have water and paper towels uh, out for this project you're going to definitely need to be blotting and if you've got a spray bottle some kind of in kind of a little mister like this uh that that you can use to spray water on here that's going to uh, be something you need and there's all my paper towels ready to go uh, i'm going to go ahead and put a little tiny bit of color in my paint so that um you can see where I'm putting this color down. So I've got just a little bit of light blue in here. And I'm going to just say, okay, where do I want my fish to be? I want it to be right here. And by the way, if you want to paint more than one on one page, you know, that's fine. But I'm just going to paint one big one so you can see it. And I look at the shape of that fish. And okay, there's the there's the front end of it. That's its, uh, it, it's mouth is right there I guess and I'm going to just go right up and this would be with clear water but I've got color in it so you can see and going back this way and just get the shape of that fish going on there and add some more water because the point of this is we're we're getting our paper wet where the paint's going to be and bring that back there and then I think I'm going to do the the tail part by going from back there into there. That puts the tail on um, and it's not got as much color in it as I thought it would. So you just spread that little bit of water all around there. And hopefully you can see, I've just got the general shape of the fish on there with water. And so once you get that part done, then uh, you start putting color in it. But this is mainly, uh, you want it to be really wet, uh, uh, like not running around on the page, but almost water puddling up on there. Uh, just a whole lot of water, because we're gonna put some color in it and then we're gonna um, spread it around and do all kind of who knows what to it. So I'm going to get some uh, good, pretty blue, and this will not be my darkest blue because I want to use the darkest blue for for that that mask part that he has on in there, or it's his armor or something. It's a blue tang fish, and I was thinking, what embellishments or what patterns might I want to put on there? And I thought of the Tang uh, Dynasty, and so I went and looked up. Um, that artwork from the Tang Dynasty, and I went and found some some maybe Asian patterns. And I don't know. Uh, I found some cool stuff along those lines, to, and I used those kind of things for giving me ideas for my embellishments. But okay, so we're going to put color in right along there, and you'll notice on his tail, his tail is yellow, but on the sides of it, it's got some blue color. So I'm going to just fling some out like that on the top. And then I do the middle part here and spread that all around in all this water that I have floating around on my paper and add more paint as needed. But it is lighter on the bottom of this fish, so I can let that have less color there. And again, bring it back here and just fling it back out that way. So this is the start of my fish. Now I'm going to uh, go ahead and put some dark color in. And if you've got too much water on here right now, or really got a lot of water, this would be a time when you might <clears throat> wait just a minute and let some of that soak in a bit so that when you put your dark blue on there, it doesn't spread all over the whole fish. You want it to spread in some 
Excuse me just a minute. <clears throat> You want, you want your color to spread in some, but you don't really want it to spread all over the whole fish. So um, make sure it's not too, too awful, you know, like puddles of water, that would be too much. Um, we're gonna get some darker color. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and add a little tiny bit of my uh, darkest purple color. It's a Windsor Violet is actually the title or the name of uh, my darkest purple. But I'm going to add a little bit of this purple to darken up my blue even more than it is. Because <clears throat> I do want a really nice, dark, pretty color. But I don't want to use black. The, the black, there's going to be just too much of it and it will spread in all of everything else and it won't look as pretty. So use a really dark blue-violet color. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at where the eye is on this fish, and I'm gonna start there and say, okay, this fish's eye is pretty close to the front and up a little high, and it's just a little round circle like that. Now, right away, my paint is already spreading out. That's okay, that's kind of what I want it to do. Then I wanna make this go up here, but not all the way to the top edge because you see it's, it's a fin I used to know what those fins were called. It might be the dorsal fin, but I might be confusing my fish fins. But anyways, um, <clears throat> that top fin there is lighter blue. So we don't want to make this dark blue all the way to the top edge. Just make it go right up close to it and then draw that back here. And then it goes out under here and then follows that little line right up there. And then, um, it kind of goes back here a little ways and comes down and you leave a little oval of the other lighter color showing in there. So you just kind of put that color where you want it to go, that it leaves some light color there and then put the rest of that back here, filling that in, making that pretty and then send that right off the back, the bottom in like that and this is where you want this part to be plenty wet because we're going to add some yellow in there right away and we want it to mix good but we just want this nice uh, part right there that's the lighter color and we want this other blue mixing in and and uh, you can tweak it a little bit as long as it's still wet you can kind of move your push your color around in your paper but don't do a lot of paint stroking and rubbing and brushing it back and forth because that won't look as pretty. You need to let the watercolor mix itself and also too much of that other kind of painting, uh, rubbing back and forth is what will cause your paper to pill. And we don't want the paper to start coming undone and getting little blobs of fibers all over everywhere. So just do it like that. And then we're going to need, before we get the blue out of the brush, we're going to need to put that little line for his gill in. Uh, and it comes from like about right here, up around this way. And you can just tap some color off your brush right onto your paper there and get a little line like that going for the fin. And then uh, there's a little, I mean for the gill, and then there's a little uh, fin right down here. So put a little line for the start of that. And then rinse the blue all out of your brush because we're gonna switch to yellow real quick and get some yellow on here while everything's still getting wet and it'll flow all around for us, at least on the tail part. And for this, um, let's see, I'm gonna clean off a spot right here so I can get some nice, pretty, bright yellow on there. Okay, once you've got some yellow <clears throat> in your brush, then, then put your tail in and bring it back in to the body just a little bit. And if you got a lot of blue on your brush when you did that, clean that off, pick up some more yellow and keep putting the yellow in. And drawing it in here to the wet part of the blue because that's where it will really mix and do good is if you get it into the area where your blue is still wet. My fish tail is running off the page, so I'm just going to let it do it. Um, now I will need 
a little bit of yellow where this um, where this little fin is right here and so I'm going to put a little drop a little line of yellow right there and then I want to put yellow on the underneath of his body and again that's not going to go all the way out to the edge because there's a blue fin out there so I just want to start right along here and just put some yellow right like that and that puts the yellow on the underbody or on his belly. Now that's all of the real painting painting we would do. Now we got to switch to doing this all this kind of splattering and spraying and 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 going a little crazy with it so that we've got uh, some beginnings of our decorating. So I'm just going to go ahead and get a little bit more really runny yellow on my brush and then I'm going to pick it up there and see if I've got it wet enough. I do. I'm going to just make some go like that around on my page. Then I will get some of the, uh, I'm going to use a little bit of a pink because I'm going to put, I've got a little bit of lavender in there. So I'm going to get some pink here and put it in my blue so I've got a really nice pretty pinky purple color happening and again I want it really really watery so that I can pick it up in my brush and drop it around like that then also uh, you can take the your finger on your brush and kind of spritz some like that and try not to totally cover the whole page uniformly with your dots. And I'm going to mix some green into this yellow that I have here and, and put some green dots on there because there might be green corals or, or kale or algae or seaweed or I don't know, some other kind of underwater vegetable is probably growing in here. But anyhow, don't put a uniform... Um, spread of dots. You, you want to put big dots in one spot, little dots in another, change up your color. I'm keeping the bulk of the green on this side, although I may put a little bit right there, um, so that you've got some variety going on. Because if you just uniformly cover the whole thing with a spritz of dots, it isn't as pretty. Now I'm going to take my spray bottle and I'm going to spray all these dots and look what they start doing. They're going to do fun things. It's my fish is, I, I kind of got a lot on my fish too. As long as I leave it laying flat, that's going to have the effect of just staying like this. But I also can pick up the page, uh, paper and start tilting it around and getting these colors to run all over the place and do cool things. And that's going to end up being the basis of uh, what we're going to make it appear to be uh, all these all these corals and sea sponges and stuff and we may you know we won't have to paint all of it because some of our uh, paint is, is doing some of the work for us you can also put your finger in here and kind of move some of that stuff around if you want to if it didn't move where you wanted it, or I've got a big puddle right there. If I just kind of move that over a little, that spreads around a little bit more. And if I think that's nice, but it's not enough, well, then I just get some more paint on my paint brush and I can dab some more color in in a few places and touch it into the wet paint there. But you do have to be a little cautious with this because if you do too much, you're going to end up um, with, where's my mouse? You're going to end up with your color mixing all together and it'll all look one color, it won't be as pretty. So try not to get all the same color everywhere and try to leave some areas with maybe a little bit more white showing so you have some area that that's lighter some that looks like maybe it's the water i'm going to leave that area back there lighter on this one 
uh, on this one, I left this area lighter just because it helps add some interest uh, to your piece. And so you just play with it a little. And like, I don't quite like that. So I'm going to spray a little more water in it. But again, I got to be a little cautious because too much mixing and it goes to brown. So since that's a little bit brown there, I'm going to just spread that so it can get lighter. And also you get some on there that you don't like. That's what your paper towel is for. Suck up that extra and it takes it right back off there. So if you got something doing something you didn't like, fix it with your paper towel. And so this is just the, the play with it, make it do something that you like. That's kind of a pretty, almost an abstract look to it. And you don't have to just use your paintbrush. You can move things around with a piece of, uh, an old piece of credit card, uh, a piece of cardboard, your paper towel, your finger, just kind of get a, uh, an under thing happening. And I don't know, um, <clears throat> if you, if you can see this really good right in here, this area right in here on my paper, the colors are are mixing themselves and they're not mixing together the 100%. They're sort of, um, there's little bits of color where it's like a little bit of yellow, a little bit of blue, a little bit of pinkish. It's, it's real mottled and you couldn't use your paintbrush and paint that on purpose on your page. What you have to do to get those kind of uh, things happening on your paper in your watercolor is to do like I just did, kind of spritz some dots of color on there, hit it with your uh, spray bottle, and then tilt your paper a little bit around. And, um, and there you go. You'll have uh, these nice watercolor effects happening. Now, um, let me move back to here. <clears throat> so that um, I can talk to you about what we're going to do on the next part, I'm going to move this aside. This is, this is really wet, and I would assume you guys' piece is really wet now, too. So uh, I'm going to put this one right over here on my other table. I can do so without getting wet paint all over something else. And I'm going to take this one, which is dry and ready to go. Now I realize yours are not dry. You're not ready to do this, but that's okay. You can watch me do this for a few minutes. Yours will be drying while that's happening. And then once I've shown you some of the different things that I did, then you can start jumping in onto yours. And, uh, you know, each one of your painting, you may not all have put the same amount of water on, so they may not all be drying at the same rate. Um, and also, if you use the technique where you use a blow dryer or a fan to dry this, just know that that air, that forced air, is it, it's uh, moving air. It's going to be exerting uh, an, a pressure uh on your paint and it's going to move your paint around so if you like your paint how it is and you want to let it dry just like it is don't blow dry it because that'll move the paint around on the paper and change how it looks so i am going to just push my paints aside i'm going to keep them out because you know i might want to add a little bit more paint as i'm going i, I won't know till till it happens uh, but I'm going to put all this over here. And now I've got my uh, colored pencils. I've got markers. They're all just a little bit out of the frame because there's not really a lot of room on the table here uh, in, in the frame that, of what you can see. But I have all kinds of colored markers. And um, let's see, I'm going to grab, well, I'll put these up here. You still can't really see them. But anyway, colored markers, colored pencils, regular pencils. I've got a big handful of, of these right here, these um, technical pens. These are all mostly black, but they're, they have different uh, tips on them, really fine point and some thicker, some thinner. Got a, a thicker black marker there. But at this point, 
I'm going to look at this and say, and again, it's dry. This is this one's completely dry. Yours won't need to be completely dry, but if it's still wet or even damp, your markers won't mark on the paper. Uh, so it really needs to be uh, pretty close to dry. Uh, and one more thing. You've probably all seen something like this, my uh, dragonfly paintings. We did, a, I think we did a dragonfly uh, class back in the uh, when we were doing in-person stuff but this is the same uh type of project the paint's dry and we're going to just start embellishing with pins and markers and stuff and i want you to not be afraid to use that black pen because uh outlining something with the black pen it can it's it's a, it's its own special look and it can be really very pretty very effective and make very nice artwork. So I'm going to look at this guy, and first I think I'm going to say, okay, I need to um, outline him a little bit just in a few places. Like I want to enhance this uh, on this fin up here. I'm going to just draw where that thing goes. And this pen doesn't want to make a dark enough line so let me get a bigger one and I'm going to zoom in so you can see so yeah that's better just make a line to draw this fish this is like when you draw and then paint well we're painting and then drawing it's a little backwards but it makes a really cool effect now um, I think I don't want a black line right here So I'm going to switch and let's just see what happens with this blue marker. I'm going to make that line with the blue. Bring that out a little bit more. And then there's um, there's the, the fins that are on him. I mean the, the markers, the lines in the fins that come this way. So just put a little something like that in there. And then I can do the same on the bottom, but if you look at the reference, um, let's see if we can go to, oh, that's not got the right one. Well, anyway, on the reference on, on the bottom, you can see it doesn't go all the way up here at the front. It starts back in here a little ways. And it's, you make a light, very light line in there. And that's if you're just trying to actually draw the shape of the body of this fish on there. And again, I wouldn't want a really dark line through the middle there, but I don't want that dark blue either. I'm going to try it with this light blue. Actually, I have, well, let me just see here. Oh, yeah, that's a good color. So I'm going to put that right along there. And then I can put the lines on the fin there. And those don't show up really strong, but... If I want, I can always add a little bit more lines like this just to get that on there. And then I can take, I'm going to take this, this purple pen, see what happens if I just do that. I like that. And if I take my wet paintbrush and go over some of that purple marker I just put on there, I can spread that marker out a little bit. And then I get some real pretty color happening in there where I did that. And that just softens it up a little, makes it look more like watercolor paint. Then I can take and start making, um, say I want to have, this looks like this weird kind of, um, see if I can find one on here to show you. Well, I don't see one on here, but I've seen them online on the internet. Uh, something kind of like that, uh, a, a, like a sea urchin or a sea cucumber or something like that. So I'm going to make that outlined with one of my green markers. And 
Then I'm going to put um, I'll put a little water. I'm going to use my blending pen. These marker sets come with a blending pen, and I can spread that color around on there. And by the way, you can start doing this on yours as soon as you're ready, but keep in mind your, uh, your paint needs to be dry or mostly dry before you start this. Now that's not spreading that around as much as I would like it to do, so again, I'm going to use a wet uh, paintbrush. There's no paint on my brush, just water. And I'm going to just soften and spread out that uh, marker that I put on there. Spread that out into what I have going on. And I think I'll put some more color, uh, green color, back in here. Maybe a little blue right there. So that's like water. And I got some turquoisey color that I want to put in there. Oh, that's pretty. And I'm just going to spread it around a little. If I want to hit that with the um, mister, again, I can with the spray bottle. But that gives me some more base to work in. Um, and I'm going to take a uh, pink, mm, very light pink right here. This is a purpley pink. And I'm going to make some dotted lines around here because I think when I've seen these in pictures, they kind of look something like that. And then I can take a marker and enhance. Actually, I need some more of those things poking off there. So let's do something like, like this. So I have a little sea urchin starting to happen in here. And And this is really just, it's, it's playtime. Kind of like when we did those letters, you start embellishing and putting on there what things look good to you. And you just keep working at it and working at it until you get it like you like it. And that's what I did with the, the sample one that I showed you. With this one, uh, I just filled in and filled in and working a little bit here and a little bit here, work on this side, then work on this side, then work over here, then work, spread, uh, you know, jump all around on the page and uh, create something. And I think remember uh, in some previous classes, I probably will have told you um, when you were a kid and you laid down in the grass outside and looked up at the clouds and found shapes in the clouds, um, that's that's a thing you can do here. Start looking for in these blobs of color that you've created around here, look for shapes and then enhance those with your pens and stuff. Uh, so like, you know, I, I saw a sea urchin right there. Now I'm going to look over here and see what I see. I see a little bit of uh, these, these things right here put me in mind of something kind of flowing up. Uh, it might be some seaweed type of thing, or it might be uh bubbles going up. I don't know. I have to have to think about that and decide what I want it to be and then go ahead and use my markers to turn it into that. And over here, I'll definitely have some bubbles because all of these little dots, those just look like a lot, bunch of bubbles going up. And I'm not going to paint that all blue for water. I'm going to just let that be assumed because what it does, it, it allows me to have, um, some interest and some this part's painted this part's not kind of stuff going on that makes a better picture so i'm going to put uh, little dots little circles around over in here some and and make bubbles and they'll they'll be all different colors and then i'll put some in in different sizes and then i can use my 
blending pens. If you have uh, bought these Tombow marker sets, you can use your blending pen to soften that color a little bit and, and give it some almost some shading and some round shape to it. So it enhances the look of it being a bubble. You can also use these blending pens on, uh, on the watercolor, like this watercolor right here. I can just spread that right out with the blending pen. Uh, I can also put a little color on here if I want to. Just rub a little color in. Let me zoom in. So I just rubbed a little color in there with the marker, and then I'm going to use the blending pen to spread that color out. You, and if you don't have a blending pen, a wet uh, paintbrush will do this. So I just put a little color behind there. And say I'm, maybe I want a little more color. Um, I'm going to put some more something going up here. But this is really strong, and I don't like it to be quite that strong. So I can use my blending pen to kind of spread it out a little. Or soften it on one side. Or I can really rub it out and spread it out a lot. You can draw this right down, just moving the the marker color around on the paper with the blending pen. Or like I said, if you have uh, a wet paintbrush, you can do it with that too. But you can get some really cool effects going on moving the color around. Put a little color on and then use your tools, different tools you have uh, to move that color around on your paper. kind of like that. So let's see what else I might do along those lines. So now um, I've pretty much showed you a lot of a lot of the technique. Um, does anyone want to uh, ask any question right now? Christine, well, to start with, um, someone had asked in the chat, what type of markers are you using? I have a variety of markers going on here. Um, I have these these markers are artist loft brush pens or brush markers. And then these are these Tombow markers that I love, dual brush pens. It has a, a brush tip on one end and a pointy thing on the other and they come with these with one of these blending sticks and they're water-based uh, and blendable. And I have a bunch of sets of, of these. Uh, there's the brand right there, Tombow but they're dual brush pens, they're water-based, and they're, um, they have a, a brush tip and a, and a little marker tip. And then I have colored pencils here, just regular, um, any kind of regular colored pencils. They don't have to be watercolor pencils although you could use watercolor pencils too. And then I have all of these technical pens, which are minor microns, and that they, they 
come in different um, widths or, or you know, the sizes of the tips. And then you can just use regular permanent marker. I also have uh, colored Sharpies. So it's, it's really uh, kind of whatever you have, whatever you want to use. I can use ballpoint pens. I can use my regular pencils. I can put some pastels in here um, or some, some oil, um, oil pastel would even work over top of here because it is mixed media. So it's a pretty much whatever you want to throw in there. And um, Thank you, know, you. Your, your, your utensils can be as varied as your imagination, the same as your, your patterns and your stuff you're, you're embellishing with, the stuff you're throwing in. You know, do you want to draw stuff just like uh, seaweed and sea urchins and corals, or do you want to do like on this one uh, where I actually drew patterns right onto the fish? And I think I'm going to do a little bit of that. And I'm going to take, uh, I think I'm going to use this color. And I'm going to use this tip and just see what happens. And uh, I'm going to, first I'm going to outline the eye. And then, uh, let's see here, zoom right in on there. Okay, so I outlined the eye. And now, um, <laughs> I'm looking for a shape. Because I know there's going to be something that I see. I'm not seeing anything quite yet, but I do see that I want to use one of these regular pins, like how I outlined that with. And I want to I want to define this little fin right here. A little bit and um, where that would be you can look in your in the reference photo there um, and, and you can probably let's see if I can enlarge that this is this is where it comes in really handy to have that regular reference uh, photo a little bit bigger where you can see it real good Let's just plop him right up here. There, he's not in the way that way. And I can make him nice and big. And you can see more of what I'm talking about with the fish. Uh, the That little fin down on the bottom there needs a little bit of def definition, but not a lot. Just enough to make, okay, we can see it there. And actually, you can't see it unless I zoom in there. See, I just put that, just that little bit of definition on there so we can see that it's there and, and we can take what's in the, in the reference in, in our, uh, in, in that reference up there, you can take what's in there and you can translate it onto your paper here in a way that looks pretty. So we're not trying to make a duplicate of this photograph. We're trying to make some pretty artwork that is, uh, representative of that. So that's why this is this would be called representational work. It's not realism and it's not abstract. It's representational because you know there's recognizable shapes and things in here, but it's not uh, photo realism. So um, hope that gives you some good info. I'm going to keep drawing here while you uh, think of some more questions to ask me. And I'm going to just make this little line right here. I can put a bit of his mouth on there. Let's see. It goes like this is that and that. There, that's as much mouth as I would want to draw on it. 
Now back to putting some kind of pattern on there. Um, this is where it kind of comes in handy to have pattern books. And by that I mean books like this, which I got, I first found this book in the Broward County Library System. And I found that I was checking it out and renewing it over and over again so much, I just decided to go on Amazon and, and find myself a copy. I bought a used copy so I could have my own book because it's uh, very uh, full of really good, it, it's a great resource. And you can uh, find all different kinds of pattern ideas and design ideas in here and say, um, you want to fill a shape with some sort of pattern and you're having trouble figuring out what you want to put in there and get you a book like this. And um, I think I told you I, I kind of equated the blue Tang with the Tang dynasty. So I went to the Chinese section of patterns in here and I can just look on here and, and see all these pattern ideas and maybe find something that I can use in there. So um, I'm going to do something along these lines because I think that's pretty. So I'm going to just set that right the book up so there. I can, see it? Can, you, can we see the front of the book again? Yes. Amy has commented, Amy author. commented that she bought the book on, on um, eBay for very inexpensive. Yeah, but mine on Amazon was like $5. Uh, I, I just went on Amazon and searched for uh, for this title, and it brings up eBay and all kinds of other uh, sources, uh, and and there are some libraries that sell used books on eBay, and you can find all of those through Amazon or go straight to eBay, whatever. But you can find these uh, on the internet and and get your own copy of it without spending an arm and a leg. And there's this is not the only one. If you just put uh, crafters pattern source book it's going to suggest a whole bunch of uh books that are similar to this with with that are you know packed with really great pattern ideas so i'm going to see what i can put on here and i'll just zoom it right in christine could you yes. just tell us uh could you show the the author's name mary mary, mary mccarthy mccarthy spell mccarthy please M-A-C-C-A-R-T-H-Y. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Anne has written in the chat also that she's using neon pencils and it's coming out very nicely. Oh, I bet it would. Um, you can use gel pens on here. You can use uh, glitter pens. You know, it, whatever art supply you have and want to want to try. Uh, Give it a whirl and see what happens. Hi, Christine. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go ahead. I just typed in what in the chat box. Just ignore that, please. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I wanted okay. to know the title. That's it. The title of that? The book? title of that, but, but I have it. I got it. Thank okay. you. Okay. And remember, it's not the only one. There's There's a bunch of them out there. Don't we all love when we do something that you can't take back? <laughs> you uh, can't hit delete and erase it? <laughs> well, yeah, then you sort of have to learn how to find a way to live with it. But also, you can use a damp paintbrush and soften it and, and you know, make it less obvious and then blot it with your paper towel and, uh, and, and kind of... Um, 
you know, rescue yourself <laughs> from something you didn't like. But that wet paintbrush will move the marker colors around a, a little bit. So, you know, maybe maybe you can get it way back to where you are happy with it. I think I'm going to put a little bit of another color in here too. I've got my markers covered up with my book. I think I saw uh, online, I haven't seen them in the store yet, but I think I saw some things called um, metallic watercolor paints. Those might be a fun thing to experiment with and play with a little bit on a project like this. Haven't used them myself, but I think that they sound fun. You can't see this in the, the light nearly as well as how it looks in person. Those, those colors I'm putting in there, that's a little better. They're very bright and pretty right in the middle of my fish right there. I'm to keep looking up at the screen so I can make sure I've got this in there for you in the frame. It's always good to kind of visualize it a little bit before you draw it. Kind of helps you not get so many of those things on there that you end up not liking and want to take back out. Some of my lines are coming out so very faint, but they're actually making an, a kind of a neat pattern. He looks like he's got a little bit of a uh, chain mail on right there. Which I think is interesting. And can be very pretty. There, that shows up better. I think I like it just like that. There, that's pretty. Okay, he's coming along pretty good.
Here, I like what that did. And there I got some lines just by picking color up from over here and spreading it over to here a little bit. I like that. I think I'm going to put some dark color. I don't like this light stuff going on right there. Let's see if I can get some more color right there that's more what I like. Just by putting a little bit of dark, darker paint right there. Oh yeah, that's better. There, I like that. And I also find that I like to just stop and stand back and look at it sometimes to just see, uh, am I liking how it's coming out? Am I liking what I've got put on the page there? Um, what do I want to put in next? That kind of thing. I do a lot of stepping back and looking at it and letting it kind of talk to me and tell me what it wants to be. I get better results when I don't rush this particular uh, technique because um, I'm not trying to overthink it or get stressed about it. I'm just trying to take a more relaxed, don't, don't feel I got to hurry up, hurry up and finish it. Just relax and enjoy uh, figuring out what marks I want to put on the page. Does anybody else have an opinion on that? Or on anything else? <laughs> yeah. And does, is anybody ready to show what they've got going on yet? Ooh. Lynn, let's see. Can you come over to your, your screen? Barbara, that looks fabulous. Oh, wow, Lynn. That was fun. I enjoyed it. Oh, that's pretty. <laughs> Very good. That's cool. Barb, put yours back up again for a second. Very that nice. turned out great. I can't see. Really I can't find her on my screen. I know it's oh, hard to go. see sometimes. Hold on. Keep yeah, Barb, if you say there. something, it'll make you come out in the group. Oh, okay. There we go. I'm sorry. There you go. Look at how that pretty. That turned out great. That's great <laughs> color. <laughs> to tell you though, I think mine is a she. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> mostly because she's got. She's Some got of them are going to need to be a she. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to make, to propagate. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who Roberta, else? Here's Bobby. Oh, very nice. Keep it up there for a second. Okay, look at that. Oh, I like that, that coral thingy, whatever it is on the bottom there. That's pretty. Thank I like you. your marks over on the left, too. They, they just kind of hint at some underwater something going on there. It's pretty. I like it. Thank you. 
It was fun. Jackie, Good. wow, I like that. I had a little pen explosion. I don't know if you guys saw me run to the sink, but I had, you should have seen my hands. They were completely covered in black. So it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll have to put fingerprints on your work. <laughs> Okay, here's Anne's. Oh, Anne. Nice, Anne. That's cool. Uh, Julie, we never see yours. Where's yours? A little, I did a little not farther back from the camera. Oh. Something else. <laughs> That's pretty. Cool. Anne, I love your neon. You're right. Looks nice. You're muted, Anne. So if you're telling us something, we can't hear you. There's a ladyfish following him. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> fish following. I like that. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm going to make the boy fish following my girl fish. <laughs> but but Who very nice. One? Good job. I have to be honest with you guys. The first time we did this, we actually did it with Christine with birds. And I really didn't think I was going to like it because I'm not one of those Zen tangle people that tangle stuff, but I ended up actually really enjoying it. So it, it's fun to just sit there and all of a sudden start drawing little lines and figures and know you don't have to make them be anything. Yeah. Marsha's looking at her piece. Marsha, you want to show the group? Oh, nice. Hold on. I got to find her. Okay. There she is. Keep holding it Very up. Nice. There. there we go. Say something, Marsha, and then we can Wait, hear you. It. Put it back up there. I just got you spotlighted. There we go. Very pretty. Very nice. Very nice. I like yours looks happy. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. Oh, Diane. Diane over here. Diane, nice. Thank you. Yes. Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. It almost looks like it has words in its fin there in the middle. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, that would be kind of an interesting thing to do is to do these blue tangs or any kind of fish like that and in their fin put some sort of inspirational quote. I like that idea. Yeah. Oh, and this I don't is know if that's what you intended, Diane, but that's what we got. <laughs> okay, now let's see Ruth. It's the letter E. Oh, yeah. that's pretty. That's pretty, too. Very nice, Ruth. Oh, Ruth, and you're in the moment with that seahorse behind you. Yeah, that's great. That mirror is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we have a few more minutes if anyone has any questions or wanted to ask anything else or if we want to have everyone hold it up and do a screenshot. We could do that. I'll take a picture. But there's a there's several people that don't have their video turned on. So if you want to be included in the screenshot, um, turn your video on. I didn't get to make one today. Um, but I will make it another time. So I don't know if you want my video on. Yeah, no, I want Jillian be in the picture. Nice to see you. Here we go, gang. Oh. Anybody Oops. else putting I'm up? Yep, yeah, I've, I've got this. Okay, I'm going to take the picture now. Everybody grin really big and hold your pa paper in front of your face. Gotcha. Theo, hold your fish up a little bit. Oh, Evie here. Are you putting yours up too? Let's see. Oh, Evie, nice. Okay, got y'all. Got ya. Mercedes, did you not paint one? No, I didn't. I, I was kind of 10 minutes late and I thought, no, I cannot do it, but I should have started. Yeah. Yeah, I find oh, well. So, so you I can watch the minutes. recording if right. you're yes. finished or you want to try again, you could go to sterlingfriends.org. I will. Yes, and, I will. And do you that. know, I'll be putting it on my channel too. Yes. Yeah. And um, don't forget, I will be putting uh, my edited version of the uh, lifeguard 
stand from last session is going up today, this this afternoon. As soon as I'm as soon as I'm finished here, I'm going to go finish clicking buttons over there. Okay, I don't know if I can make it on February fifth. I go for my second vaccine. Oh, and who knows how long back. you'll be waiting, huh? I don't know, but I'm gonna. I hope to make it. Bobby, well, we'll, we'll hope that you don't have a long wait at the vaccine. Oh, last time was three hours. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. God. Yeah. I have a quick, I'm Bobby, sorry. Bobby, again, we'll put it, uh, the recording up for the hearts. Yes. We'll be on February Good. 5th and we'll put the okay. recording up for the friends and on Christine's website so you could get it either place. Great. I put a question, you, I put a question on, the, on the chat about, I looked up the blue tang fish on the splash. Um, Mm -hmm. website and I couldn't find the one that you're that we're drawing today so I was wondering does it have a different name is it someplace else well if you go if you make you're sure you're at unsplash.com right then yes. you uh it, it can you can search by categories or you can just in the search bar put fish and it'll I did I put lot It'll pop a lot of pictures up there, and you just got to keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. You can oh, okay. put blue tang fish, but if the person that uploaded up. the picture yeah. did not label theirs blue tang fish, then it won't come up in the search. So I just put fish. Oh, okay. Okay, just fish. All right. I That's what I did. I, I put in blue tang fish, and that's why it didn't come up. Other, other, other blue tangs came up, but not yours. Okay. All right. Thank you. Christine, yes. Um, can you tell everybody while we have a few extra minutes on February fifth, what what supplies will they need for the heart project? Well, you'll need basically the same supplies that we used today. Uh, let me grab my folder with uh, all those cards in it. Let's see if well, I can we... make sure I've got the right. No, this is not it. Uh, but I'll show you what we're doing. find the folder. I put it right out here in the front so I could find it easy and naturally <clears throat> I can't find it easy. <laughs> well I can't find them right now but basically we're just going to do oh hold on one second. Do you want me to go get mine? Yeah because I can't okay. find mine. I find the Christmas ones. <laughs> I I can't find the Valentine ones, but I've got the Christmas ones here. We're just going to paint stuff mm, this way. Uh, that's, uh, of course, it won't be Christmas stuff, but we're going to do stuff like this. So you can take your piece of paper uh, and go ahead and fold it in half and get it to card size and have as many of them as you want to have um, because as fast as you can paint them, that's how many will do. You have yours, Jackie? I do. This is one of them that I did. And see, it's oh. actually a card. You can actually see that it's a card. And this is one that I did too, in the same day. So, and it's a card also. Love them, Jackie. They're oh, really they're nice. beautiful. Yeah, I really like them. I like them so much, I never gave them to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> you gave them to yourself. I love that. <laughs> So I'll have all of a bunch of samples and I'll just be showing you some ideas and we won't have a reference photo because the reference photo would just be a drawing of a heart. We're basically going to use a heart shape and we may paint um, a whole bunch of a uh, whole bunch of hearts or one heart on a string or, you know, whatever. And you can, you can be gathering up your favorite uh, Valentine phrases or sayings you know, so you can keep those in mind because we're going to paint. It, it may be just painted hearts all covering up the the whole surface like the ones Jackie just showed. Or you may paint a heart and then write some, uh, write your phrase uh, out in front of it, be mine or, you know, something like that. So just have your, your uh, best Valentine ideas ready in your head and have your paper that you've, um, you don't have to tape it down. Uh, to your board that day because we'll be make, creating cards. You can tape them down if you want to, but then you're going to need like a whole bunch of uh, small boards to tape all your, 
your, however many cards you're going to make have to be taped down. Um, one thing that I do sometimes is, uh, let me see if I can find this small board and show you. I'll I be sending a smaller out a board here, which I use to, um, let me do this so you can all see it. What I do is, is I, um, I cut my paper down to the right size and then uh, tape it on, tape it on here and I run the tape like if, uh, if, I, if this was one I was doing. I'll put the, I'll put the tape here and here and here and run a piece of tape right down here. So I've got a nice straight edge here mm -hmm. so that when I fold the card, uh, I have a nice line there. But you don't really have to do that at all. On this one, I didn't do that. And if I fold this card in half and, you know, crease it and like it's ready to be a card, some of that green may be on the back and who really cares? So up to you what you want to do. This this is um, over here with a regular nine by 12 paper that we've been using. Yeah. This is one piece of that folded in half and cut right down the middle. And then you've got enough for two cards. Perfect. So hopefully that makes sense. Take yes. one of these pieces of paper, fold it in half, cut it two cards. Thanks. So, um, that's what we'll be doing. Thank I'll you. send the photo references and an email to you. So you have the mixed media birds also, but the same supplies then will apply for both classes next month. Thank you. Thanks. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're, You're welcome. welcome, everyone. Thanks. Thank, Thank you all so much for joining. Thanks. Thank this you. Have a good week. It's Bye. fun to go and meet up each week. So or twice a twice a month, I should twice say, not each week, every other week. But um it's this is enjoyable. Very so much. Thank you. It is certainly it is. It's yes. a wonderful afternoon. Thank mm. you all. Thank you. 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 Thank everybody. Bye. 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 Yeah. Yes. Julie, did you need me to stay?